I'm telling y'all, man, if y'all watch this, this is really... Oh, I, I teared up so many times watching this. I, yeah, no, I did. I choked up, too. This is really one of the most powerful documentaries I've seen. Because mm-hmm. I'm watching it. I, I'm, I got tired of documentaries because I get so tired of them trying to manipulate me. And w- with this, I was like, that's not even what's going on here. No. It's just, it's just laying it out. Just people telling their stories. Let's start with On the Record, man. Let me see. On the record... This is uh, the big expose about Russell Simmons, you know, the big hip hop mogul who started his own clothing line and started Def Jam Records. They call this guy the king of hip hop for a mm-hmm. while. You know, there's so many legendary things that came from Russell Simmons under the label of Def Jam, you know, including. Uh, deaf comedy jam, mm-hmm. deaf poetry jam. Yeah, yeah. P- uh, poetry slam. Yeah, <laughs> poetry slam. Yeah, you know it's a, it's really got to a lot of people, man. Because uh, just like these big figures out there, Cosby and Weinstein, they, they, these people leave legacies that are a huge part of your life. Sure. <clears throat> and like Cosby, you his public persona was always a sweet, nice guy. He was always smiling. He was, yeah, he turned like, what was he, like a Buddhist and he was always talking about Zen. Mm-hmm. He gave up eating meat. He didn't drink anymore. Mm-hmm. He was always talking about peace from within, yeah. <laughs> you know. And then the horrors from outside <laughs> that he casted <laughs> upon people. Yeah. Uh, allegedly. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, documentary. What the documentary centers on is one of his alleged victims. What's the name? Uh, Drew Dixon. Drew Dixon, yeah. yeah. She she was the one that really brought to light the accusation, opened the floodgates for people to come out and really bring out in the open all the allegations about Russell Simmons. And what I like about this is that, yeah, it is it is talking about the allegations against him, but what I admired about this is that this documentary is really a lot more. You know, it's rough to watch, but there's a lot more going to it. I mean, this thing has a lot of layers, man. That's one of the that's actually one of the worst things about it. I'll explain after we watch this trailer. I didn't tell that many people about what happened with Russell. He just grabbed me. He just grabbed me. First of all, a lot of people are going to go into this not understanding uh what this is about you're going to try to cry other cry cry about other controversies around this you know this whole thing with oprah being involved uh you're going to be talking about how men of uh of uh uh, you know color you off and uh uh, attacked uh which look there might be some validity to that you know that's that is a discussion to be had but you know a lot of people going missing the point of this man because a lot of people gonna go in thinking like you know this is this there's another allegation is another, you know, documentary just trying to, you know, uh, uh, attack a man right now. You know, we don't even know, you know, this. It's, it, was she fired or, you know, what, what, what is his side? You know, it's, it's just another documentary to go in and, and, and uh, probably even to just use something to get people riled up to get a lot of attention for HBO Max. Mm-hmm. This is just, you know, this is another, you know, maybe, maybe true, maybe not. Well, this is a, this is a, a hot, uh, hot button issue so that HBO can attract people to come over and get them talking. But, man, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something. I went in not knowing anything about this story right here. Same here. And I got to tell you, uh, this, is, this is not like people who are at uh, uh, Sundance watching uh, uh, the Neverland documentary. Right, right, right. There's a lot of layers that goes on in this documentary that it is about her allegations, but there's, a, you know, there's, it goes deeper than that. Why her allegations are important to be heard and the impact that her coming out and saying this, the impact that it has on other women who were scared to say things mm-hmm. in a certain, within a certain, uh, uh, a certain group of people. This whole thing, if you're into 90s hip hop, 80s hip hop, if you're in the history of early hip hop, they bring you in on that, and you kind of get sucked into the history itself. At first, it seems like a big history lesson Mm-mm. on hip hop and her contributions to it. Because as yeah, you saw I... in the in, you saw in the documentary, all she you know she says, "I want I, the moment I discovered hip hop, she loved music." But she said, "The moment I discovered hip hop, I just wanted to go do A and R for hip hop, man." You know, she started uh, doing stuff for Biggie, and you know, and uh, 
And then you learn about her roles in hip hop, which is a sad thing later. But, you know, she came up, uh, she was behind one of the biggest, uh, <laughs> what they say is like the one of the first hip hop uh, uh, ballads of his kind out there with uh, uh, Method Man and Mary J. Blige. Um, the uh, All I Need, man, you know, uh, y'all probably remember this from the early 90s. They pull no fucking. She was a she was uh, heavily essential in that man. Mm -hmm. She was the big producer on that man, pulling that together. Uh, and you just start finding all these facts about her role in hip hop, getting these. Uh, you know, if you if you didn't know about hip hop, then you're learning something. If you did know about hip hop, then you you're, you're enjoying. She was no lightweight or just somebody in the background. No, you're enjoying talking about talk, talking about the discussion, and you get lost in that. You're almost feeling good about it. And then <laughs> Russell Simmons raped me. <laughs> it's like Jesus. Well, it, it's, it doesn't just drop Russell Simmons raped me. It starts going into the misogynistic culture of hip hop. It goes deep. It goes into the misogynistic culture of music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they say, you know, the thing that happened with hip hop is that uh, it's just an extension of rock and roll and. Mm -hmm. A lot of other things out there, man. You know, they think hip hop wasn't the only one to be talking about bitches and all. You know, you had Rolling Stones talking about how black girls are just good for f mm -hmm. and you know. Uh, uh, but it does make you uh, listen to a lot of hip hop and like actually, th it, there's a lot of reflecting with this. You have to a lot of reflecting with the music and some of the people that you admire too, or some of the celebrities that you actually are into. You, it makes you take a deep look at yourself and your love for all of that. Yeah. Uh I guess you know what I, I, I. It's gonna sound typical of me to say this, but that that has always bothered me about it from the beginning. The, yeah. the liberal use of calling women bitches and hoes. I, it's it's something that's always kind of kept me from being endeared to hip hop. Yeah, I mean it's it, you know and, and it's but the thing is it's not fair to say that it's just you know that part because there was so much going on because that's what the thing you know, the the documentary tells you it's like there were so many of the facets. Uh, of hip hop at the time, they that again they had conscious rap like KRS One, oh yeah, absolutely, and Public Enemy, yeah, and you I've know, always loved that. They had the jazz movement with hip hop mm -hmm. and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, there's it, it. It wasn't like that was all of hip hop, but that was a that was a part that people were using to sell hip hop right. to a lot of to a lot of uh, mainstream out there. And what that leads to is talking about how you know, yeah, this is a misogyny up front here, but a lot of the worst things happen behind the scenes. I know. You know, at least these rappers weren't raping people or anything, but it was the people who used their power. It, it's something record executives have done since the beginning of record executives. Yeah. I mean, it's what a lot of people do. But, you know, they would, it's just that here, uh, the, the reason why this is important to talk about here is unlike all these uh, other people that are accused, uh, this centers on the voices of black women mm -hmm. who... You know, they're the most, and it's hard enough for women to come out and say something, but they're the most afraid to say something mm -hmm. because they're the ones that people are really not going to listen to. Mm -hmm. Because, they, you know, they, they say that, you know, first of all, you're in this culture where people blow you off. Hey, just, you know, oh, girl, quit bugging. Quit, you know, quit, you know, complain. Just, uh, they, you know, just go with the flow. The other thing is, you know, black women are seen as so sexual or, so aggressive of whatever. It's just almost like this whole attitude of like, well, you know, you wanted it or mm -hmm. you had it coming. Or, yeah, well, you're just a gold digger anyway. Yeah, exactly. And that's the one thing I really, uh, 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 you know, that really moved me with this is like they were talking about how, you know, you get somebody who, you know, if there's a, in Hollywood, now it's hard for women to get out there anyway, but you know, a lot of uh, of celebrities and people of power and white women complained about Weinstein mm -hmm. and they got his ass, yeah, you know? Yeah. They said something. The thing about this is that they said, you know, whether you believe these women or not, let's just say that you do, though, something, you know, because these are people of color. This it, it, Either it's going to be a long time or nothing's going to happen. Sure. You know, it's uh, I mean, and because if you look at it, I mean, who took who ran with it? Tarana Burke was the one who started the whole Me Too movement and it got co-opted mm -hmm. immediately. And she was let. A lot of people still don't know that she uh, is the Me Too founder. Mm -hmm. Like this is a documentary about Black women's voices and how they are not heard a lot of times. And this one woman who came out because of that, you know, it's a whole history of uh, 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 what's his name, Thomas, uh, 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 the Supreme Court. 
Oh, Clarence Thomas. Clarence, Clarence Thomas. Yeah. Clarence Thomas. All the way to Clarence Thomas to people like uh, Mike Tyson, you know, and a lot of people. And this is another thing that is talked about. It's like, how, you know, all these women are in, a, in an area where you get these powerful men who are not only powerful men, but they're celebrities. Or they're big figures of people who they're, 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 they're figures who people like. And people just don't want to they just don't want to believe that someone mm. they're really into has done this. Yeah. There's this sort of this. Uh, I don't know. I this default trust that you have uh, for people that you see uh, on television or celebrities or you, you know, you form an attachment and there's always this idea that, oh, there's no way they'd be doing this because nobody would let them do this. Yeah. And you just, you know, and that's getting busted open. And like, no, there's nobody, there's nobody minding the store. There's, there, there's, there's, there's no police force that's, that's keeping things, <clears throat> these things from happening. Yeah. No, oh, just as you know, until the, until we absolutely have to say something, we just don't want to admit that the people we admire. Mm-hmm. That's why I tell you with Michael Jackson. I said I don't think there's enough evidence, but I'm gonna tell you that I, I'm just gonna say I don't know. Yeah, yeah right. I don't, right. you know, I, that's where I stand. But you know, with this, I would tell you my verdict on this, uh, and it could change at some point. But again, unlike some of these other things that we've seen out here, and Chris, I'm about to pass it to you. I be, I, I believe them, man. I oh. believe exactly what the. A- absolutely it's 20 women who came out against russell simmons yeah that's that's the thing it's it's the amount but also the, these are women like this isn't one of those sensational documentaries that where where they are really trying to pump the facts and, and get your blood going these 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 are all very credible women who are reluctant to, to come out and say something and the damage has been done to them and they kept quiet through it and they aren't gaining anything from this there there's not a well now this will boost my career because some of them this was enough to make them get out of the game they aren't even, even trying to do yeah. that anymore people it's it's 20 women who have come out against yeah, russell yeah Simmons. yeah and there's no way these 20 women these 20 women got together and formed this plan and that's another thing if you want to talk about women of color that's something but again i told you guys because i'm waiting for somebody to say cool you're a hypocrite you say you don't believe and believe women i don't believe in that slogan and just blatantly having mm-hmm. somebody drop you an accusation and all of a sudden say yeah guilty i believe in discuss in discussing these this is a discussion yeah and they had a lot of discussion about the women of, <laughs> who came out and said that russell simmons raped me and they had about three different women who described his mo uh-huh. to a t the a t. same thing yeah I, I don't think 20 women got together in cahoots and said, let's lynch Russell Simmons. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, man. I don't, I don't, I, I, I believe that motherfucker did it. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, man. I mean, I would say the thing that fascinated me the most, you know, we talked about this on the Daily Double Talk. The thing I kept pounding the drum for was that, like, look, th- like, this is a movement that has failed black women. It's failed women of color in general across, like, you know, black Latino communities. So it was a big deal that this was finally going to happen because it gave them that representation. The thing that fascinated me the most was the – and you brought it up – the response to Anita Hill when it came to Clarence Thomas or and I forget the the young lady's name, but the Mike Tyson, uh, the beauty queen lady, yeah. um, it's there is this extra pressure about like protect the race versus protect yourself. Oh, no. Uh Oh, look happened? at what the nation right. constantly does to black men. And they have this maternal kind of thing about it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah, except for the part you cut out for a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, like, uh, oh, I cut Russell's, out? Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, well, what was the last thing you heard? I wonder if Russell Simmons was messing with the controls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got to cut this off. He doesn't want the truth to get out. Yeah, no. Uh, no, just just literally just the idea about protecting, uh, the, protecting the race before protecting yourselves. Like the idea that because we live in a nation where we constantly see what people do to black men repeatedly, it's about like a maternal protect them even to your own detriment. And that was something that they illustrated that 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 hadn't even occurred to me. Well, Christian, that, that even happens to us to a degree. If we com- if we talk about some stupid shit that Kanye West has done or or Diamond and Silk Cooning, somebody's going to write us and go, hey, you guys shouldn't say anything bad about any black people ever. Or it could be the opposite. It's kind of like it'll say, you know, stop defending black people so much, which is uh, – you know, which was an argument I had with people about Black Lives Matter recently. You know, you can't win these days. No. Well, people are like, I mean, I've seen a bunch of these comments already about like, where's this documentary? Where's that documentary? And that always rubs me the wrong way oh, because absolutely. it's like, I hear you. By the way, there's an Epstein documentary out today on Netflix. But uh, but but the whole point is like, you're you're really going to put that before the fact that this guy has had 20 separate women come forward, and that that's a weird line in the sand to draw. All the women were incredibly, or sorry, they were credible. Like yeah. I believe oh, yeah. their stories for sure. Yeah, I, I, that, that, I was. It's funny because when you said that, I was, I was looking at that, and that was going to be something I was going to talk about in a little while. I was like, man, you know, 
Stop talking about where is this and that. Yeah, we what, got, what about that? Yeah, we, we got this right here, okay? Yeah, exactly. Maybe this stuff is coming, but that doesn't... You act, you act like that takes away from their allegations because there ain't another a, a, a documentary out there. Well, I always feel when somebody goes, hey, why are you jumping on me? What about them and them and them? It's like, well, you just admitted that you're guilty then. Yeah. Because you just admitted that what you did was bad and you're associating yeah. yourself with them. And I'm talking to you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Don't give up. I will yeah, get to them I'll later. Get to them later. I'll get them I'm in talking a to you. Time, I'm talking to you. I'm telling y'all, man. If y'all watch this, this is really. Oh, I, I teared up so many times watching this. I yeah, no, I did. I choked up too. This is really one of the most powerful documentaries I've seen. Because mm -hmm. I'm watching it. I, I'm. I got tired of documentaries because I get so tired of them trying to manipulate me. And with, with this, I was like, that's not even what's going on here. No, it's just it's just laying it out. Just people telling their stories. No, it's 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 terrible, man, because what it did was it, you know, these are people who they use their power to not only get away with this, but just blatantly lie to people. And when they do that, they knowingly have ruined the careers of these women. There's a part in here where they say, what what could Drew Dixon have done uh -huh. if 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 she was allowed? What greatness could have been done mm -hmm. if she had been allowed to keep going? But they took that from her, man. Yeah. They don't rate her, but they raped her career yeah. they took all that from her you know uh, uh seriously if you don't know people just watch and if you still don't you know have your opinion afterwards but don't come in here like cold talking about well f man you know russell simmons she could have whipped his ass and i don't believe her or what the, you know we, well he's, you know it's a, i don't know it's, it's his word against hers and all. you know dude has 20 allegations against him <laughs> right <laughs> and like I said, it's really powerful to hear all these women come in one after another and tell you a very similar story. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, but you know, it's, it's, it's like I said, it's something about talking about how the culture's out there. It's like how, you know, how this is very comp more complicated. And they also take advantage of how it's more complicated because, you know, uh, there's, this, you know, black men have been victimized of, uh, you know, b because of their, their, their perceived uh, sexual Sexuality. aggression. Mm -hmm. And so there's this whole thing where, like, psychologically, we feel like we always have to protect black men. It happened with Cosby. You know, uh, Clarence Thomas did the same thing. This is a lynching. Black yeah. men say society's coming after me and whatnot. And it's like, and then there's this need to protect black men from, uh, because of all the, the, the years of lynching and, and violence against them just for perceived uh, sexual aggression and sexuality. But now these women are like, you know, what about us? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we are lower than all this shit. And they point out there's other people out there, man. It's it's funny how deep this goes. L.A. Reid is another guy, another producer where she thought she'd be safe at this other company until this asshole came I in know. and did the same thing, used his power to not only, and what's funny about this, I'm not going to say the, the, who the people are, <laughs> but he used his power to try to ruin the careers of, 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 of huge artists right now. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's the, a, people he could have signed and, and been hailed as a genius. Exactly. He tried to ruin people's careers just because somebody wouldn't f him. You know, uh, uh, and when you realize who these artists are, you're going to be like, damn. Well, shit, he just raped himself. I know. You, you're kind of stupid. You know what I find really interesting about that is that that's sort of been an open secret. L.A. Reid, I mean, that wasn't like a bombshell. It's, you've heard reports for a couple years. And, and much like Cosby, like that was like a slow news day where it got traction. But those rumors had been there for a very, long, like very, very long time. So it's interesting, like when the moments actually catch on, you feel like there'll be this momentum. But like Cosby happened and then there was this. You know, it was it was it was kind of grandfathered into all of that. I wonder yeah. what repercussions, if any, there's going to be from this documentary. I mean, I you know, L.A. Reid. I don't know. Uh, I tell you what, man. I, I you know, I can't say that Russell Simmons needs to. I personally feel that way, but I can't say he needs to go right now until we actually, you know, more is brought to light and we. I guess, you know, he has a trial or whatever. But who knows if that'll happen with him? But he, in my opinion, he definitely needs to go. <laughs> I mean, if he doesn't go to jail, he needs to get the f out. Mm -hmm. Uh, L.A. Reid is hard to tell, man. And then it makes you question some other people. Like I said, man, you know, we all we all want to, you know, we always show that clip of Mike Tyson, <laughs> you know, and him on the news and whatnot. We're like, oh, they shouldn't have brought that thing up about him being a uh, convicted rapist. And he served his time. But it makes you look at him and like, OK, shit, now nah, I got to have my doubts about him, too. Yeah. And nobody wants to because these are people that we want to look up to and admire and laugh at and have a good time with. But it makes you look back at that. There's a lot. The other layer with this documentary, there's a lot of self-reflection with it, man. All the shit that you grew up with and loved, music, people, whatnot. You have to sit back and say, all right, at what point do I have to 
let this go or admit that it's not what I what it was when I was really into it at first. It was a uh, a really odd comparison, but I would sort of compare it to the O.J. Simpson documentary in as much that like that is not a documentary about a murder or about a football star. They really give you this context and they take you back so you can understand it and they take you back to the burgeoning state of hip hop and women's role in that. And they give you all this context and it, and it, it, it hits on a bunch of different fronts. It's it, you know, as far as documentaries go, Martin said it earlier, a lot of them are bad. Like they just are like they are purposefully made to manipulate. And if you are a keen observer, you can usually tell when something is trying to manipulate you. I never felt that it felt like the cameras were rolling and they just let these people talk. And it was refreshing. Yeah. And you know what? It's funny because I look in the chat and said uh, I see somebody was even saying earlier, like, uh, you know, she's talking about accusations against Russell Simmons. You mean like the ones that happened 20 years ago? Motherfucker, is there an expiration date on rape? Yeah, you know that's the that, reason. That's, why, you know that's, that's that's different than somebody wearing blackface for a skit because uh, who, who's hurt? Yeah, but, but this is this is a criminal act. Yeah, that's why I keep telling y'all, man. Y'all keep saying, well, you know, you're always so sensitive about Roman Polanski. The mother raped somebody. Now everybody wants to act like there's an expiration date on it. He raped the child. I don't care if the child is older. There's no expiration date on that. As far as I'm concerned. I don't know what the what 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 the punishment would be. At least an acknowledgement is serving a little bit of time or something for what you've done. Uh, and I feel the same way about him. You know, I don't give a f if it's 20 years ago. It's it, by, by the way, it was 20 years ago, and it was 20 women that we know of at least. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, Which again, the documentary tackles is is kind of my point. You know, they go into that about why she would have trepidation about doing it to begin with. But I really feel like it's a deep seated hero worship thing, where it's like, again, like you have you have these people who who transcend a, a culture which we already like the police and the government says, hey, black men, people of color, you're less than. So when you get these people who get to the top, like there is a real uh, idolization of them, and then to find out that they're less than perfect or worse than less than perfect, they're just bad people. Like that's a real really hard pill to swallow for a lot of people especially when you don't have a billion heroes to choose from yeah people i know i know there's a lot of racist shit going on i know there's a lot of you know issues going on with politics and whatnot and that's what people try to say well you know what about this what 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 about what what about this <laughs> shit right you know yeah how are you able to overlook this right here it's like what you know if anybody says that it's because you just you have some stake in this that you just you 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 you're in denial. You don't want to. You don't. You know. You this. I'm not saying. I'm not. I'm not putting up a pure admittance of guilt. I'm saying I don't like where this went, and I think that I personally feel like yeah, he's guilty. That's my feelings. But as far as being fair, yeah, he needs a trial and whatnot. But uh, I would tell you, a lot of people just don't want to have a discussion about this at all because for some reason you got some personal emotional stake in this. You love Def Jam. You love Russell Simmons. You uh, you know you. I don't know, you stick up for man. I don't know, but you know, that, that, all that, man, you know, focus on this right here. Instead of, because if you, if, you, if you start saying, well, what well, about this? Well, what about, what this? about Bill Clinton? They're like, F him too, but I'm talking about him. Yeah. yeah, that whole idea that, well, if we can't fix everything, then we'll just fix nothing. It really is, a, a, like I said, there's a lot going on here, man. And, and, and as far as uh, HBO having this one of their debut things right here. I mean, especially how much of all those that those Russell Simmons shows were on HBO. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I didn't even think of it that yeah. way. Yeah, Def Poetry was on when I was a kid. That was like a big deal. And all the Def Jam stuff, yeah, too, yeah, the, the comedy. The Def, Def comedy and all the people's careers who got made from that. Yeah. This is... Uh, yeah, no, they, this, they were very much in bed with Russell Simmons. Yep. A lot of people were in bed with Russell Simmons, man. Russell Simmons was called a mogul for, uh, for a reason. Wait, so... Is HBO still playing those? In the, I don't. Is it still I, part of the I, vault? I, I, that's a great question. I don't see. I them. didn't see it on any of the content yeah. lists. By the way, the fact that Rick Rubin, the guy who I hate to be stereotypical, looks like he might do some terrible shit to you, is completely absent from this documentary. It's amazing. Yeah, that's right. He's not. Yeah, uh, his partner, mm. uh, Rick Rubin. You know Rick Rubin's, right? Yeah. He gives us bearded folk hope, man. I gotta tell you. <laughs> he even got that homeless man stare. Look at him. <laughs> That crazy look when you right, right. When you're sitting inside somewhere eating, and you look out the window, and it's just a dude looking at you like that crazy man. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, he's nowhere to be found, and that's a great point, Christian. It's a great point. Uh, yeah, people, I, you know, I, all I can do is say, hey, of course, make up your own mind. I think there's a very, very highly convincing argument for what happens. It's not sensationalist at all. No. No, I, I, I greatly appreciated that about it. 
And I went in because a, a Christian can tell you when we were talking about it. I said, well, uh, I like to approach everything fairly. I just need to hear the, you know uh, the whole story. And then I heard this, and I was like, damn. Yeah, I know because because there there was a point where I was like, well, I'd like to hear you know his his side of things. Although I'm not leaning towards it, but I would just for the sake of fairness. But the longer it went on, and the more women start talking, it's like, okay, bro, what what, what you got? And and his his statement, I was like, that's that's way too weak for for what's going on here. And flaunted it, yeah, like he's you know kissing the very women that he had types about that he ended up like sexually assaulting, again allegedly. But I don't know, man. I uh, I've been spouting a lot of my personal feelings on this, but I will say that. Uh, for me, this was a powerful documentary, but I do think only thing I would say about it that seems manipulative of like I like for documentaries to speak for themselves. I don't like music that plays at the at the right queued up time because I think this was powerful enough to do that. But again, that's something small for me. But I I I can't doubt that people will watch this even if you don't want to believe. I mean, it's it'll make you think. Mm-hmm. And furthermore, let's just say that. You don't want to, you, you know, you don't want to face up to this, or you, you don't believe, or whatever. You, the whole Russell Simmons side of this is something that you don't even want to uh, talk about. It does make a very good argument about how powerless black women are in this hierarchy of viol- of women being violated, mm-hmm. of having a voice in these things. Uh, it also talks about the, the the really crazy politics of of sexual assault and violations and, you know, to the black community in general, how, you know, that history of everybody being uh, uh, victims of racism, how it's messed up everybody's mind from sure. black man to women. Oh yeah. Well, that, that whole element of, well, if, if he raped you, how come you didn't call the police and the, the dialogue, the inner dialogue people, black people have to have about calling the police. Yeah. Cause there's that fear of if I get the police involved, what could be the consequences that I don't want out of this? Yeah. There's a whole lot of stuff. And hey, if the heavy stuff is not something you want to get into, I say watch about the, the first 15, 20 minutes because there's a great hip hop discussion <laughs> yeah. that goes on. Hip hop history. Yeah. Yeah, man. Very well put together. The filmmakers here are Kirby Dick and Amy Ziering. And uh, it's an excellent documentary, man. Excellent. Excellent, man. To wait, I mean, it, this is going to get people talking, man. Uh, I think it should. Uh, I just want to say one last thing about it too, because they make the point in the documentary, which is that yes, these three women, uh, they kind of all powwow at the end, and they they're like, yeah, I don't feel alone anymore. But they acknowledge like they are light skinned black ladies, mm-hmm. like, and they and they they have to acknowledge the fact that they're believed in some way because they're looked at and they are perceived as more reliable than darker skinned ladies. And I thought that was like another, like watching this the whole time, it was like just giving me perspective that I didn't necessarily have, but I'm glad I did. It's funny because they talk about how in the misogyny there, there is, there is racism. Yeah. You know, uh, well, there's, there's the, uh, you know, I don't know if you call it racism or, or not, but it's just, you know, it's the, it's this whole thing that black people have to, have to like really talk about of dark skin versus light skin. Mm. You know, they talked about how these women who you, you, who even even being the target of misogyny and, and sexual objectification, man. That's why I always tell you, you know, all the you know they got the women with the straight hair or the wavy hair and whatnot. They got the women who are light skinned You know, it's even 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 with the sexual uh, uh, victimization that goes on, the sexualization uh, and objectification. Even there, it's like darker skinned black women don't mean shit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's yeah, it's something. It's something where it's not only just saying the racism that we have to de- deal with white people. It's like we got to deal with our own problems with the and our own problems with with race that we that we uh uh, throw at ourselves right you know it's it's man it's some deep shit going on (laughs) with this it will (laughs) you up (laughs) it's a lot a lot to unpack i said god let me put this bugs bunny on me because this shit (laughs) me up for a day (laughs) yeah it's not even like a whole watching something and it's dour and depressing because it's it's interesting and fascinating but it is really sad and it's not going to solve anything, man. If anything, it's going to just complicate things more. But but it's good to have it unearthed. It, it is. It is. I mean, we, you know, we're going to have to have these discussions. And, mm-hmm. you know, and if nothing else, I mean, man, uh, I hate it. I hate it that, you know, if this is if these guys really did it, uh, that there's a possibility that they could get away with it. 
hopefully it'll, in this new age right here, man will think twice about doing that shit. I mean, that, that is the hope. Next time you're some, you know, record executives and you want to have somebody come up and listen to a demo, but really what you want to do is pull your dick out and you don't think about that. Mm-hmm. Next time you, you're uh, Louis C.K. and you want to go into a room and have coffee and pull your dick out and stir it with it, you know, you're going to think about that shit. You know, it's a uh, man will go forward. There will be a whole new discussion of man having discussions with their son saying this is what you don't do. Mm-hmm. For one, you have to like. You have to be a man and not do this shit. You can't be, you know, somebody who takes advantage of women. If nothing else, you don't want to go to jail because everybody's looking now. Sure, sure. Well, well, for so long, and I'm not saying it's gone, but for so long, the 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 the, the sermon that men were always given when they were boys is get pussy. Just whatever you got to yeah. do. If you got to step on your friend, you got to lie, you got to cheat, whatever you got to do, just get it. If you got to take it, there was always, always that going on, and. There's less of that now. Plus, yeah. plus with that, <laughs> with that mentality comes going to jail. Yep, and getting sued. Yeah, fathers will still say, "Hey, get pussy," but make sure you take this permission slip, get that shit signed. <laughs> Here's a number to my lawyer right here. <laughs> Be a gentleman. <laughs> I don't want to hear no shit. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> you know, hey, and if it all works out, then go ahead. <laughs> you know, but it better be her decision and not yours. It's uh, no, I need I needed to watch the Looney Tunes, man. Right after that. And then when I put it on, I got this shit. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> you know what? Cancel all these motherfuckers. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Cancel everything with a penis. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>